The Danube springs from two head rivers in the Black Forest and takes its natural course through fields and But further downstream, things look different. Here, the Danube is still a river full of life. It's not quite untouched, but it has its natural strength and flows freely. The Danube flows unhindered through the areas of Straubing and Wilshofen for 70 kilometers. It's springtime in the alluvial forest. The first rays of sun reawaken the life cycle of the plants, and within days, the forests are adorned with a new cloak. A dab of color in the fresh green, the blue throat. He's at home where there are reeds, wet ditches and shrubbery. As more and more wetlands are destroyed, these little birds are running out of space. Just next door, a great rarity, the penduline tit. Its nests count as one of the most elaborate in Europe. Skillfully, it weaves its dangling home onto hanging twigs or a branch fork of the poplar or willow tree. The male starts building the nest alone, hoping to attract a female. If he doesn't, he'll leave the nest and start again in a different location, hoping for a little more luck. His neighbor is quite a bit further with his nest. It takes three to four weeks for the little nest to be completed. The branch to which the nest is attached plays a vital role in ensuring its stability, forming part of the whole structure. The sacks are so elaborately woven, they used to be worn by small children as slippers. A sweeping floodplain. The stately white willows offer a home to many types of animal. The spotted woodpecker is a regular visitor. He knows that there are plenty of beetles and insects to be had under the rotten bark. Adeptly, he uses his strong beak to push the bark to one side and explore the trunk. Probably the loudest voice to be heard is that of the great reed warbler. This noisy bird has large lungs and is the loudest warbler in Europe. The backwater offers plenty of reeds to make his home. An amphibian landscape, a combination of water and land, is what makes the alluvial forest. In its midst, a great beaver dam stems the flow of the water. When the river floods, this dam stems the flow of the water, forcing it into the surrounding land where it can drain. The more beavers there are in the stream, river or alluvial forest, the more protection there is on offer at no extra cost. Beavers are less concerned with floods than with protecting their young. No predator can get into a lodge whose entrance is underwater. Beavers pair for life and care for their young. These two are only a few weeks old. They're born with fur and can see, although not too well. 
Beavers are short-sighted and colorblind. The little ones are suckled for two months and grow quickly. Beaver milk is very nutritious and has four times as much fat as cow's milk. An abandoned channel in the forest. The ideal route of approach for this flying emerald, the kingfisher. The fish in its beak is a giveaway. There are young to be fed. But where? The kingfisher has been creative and made its nest in the tangled root mass of a toppled tree. A downside is that dry earth gets stuck in the feathers. But that's nothing a pleasant little dip can't take care of. But there's no time to sit and dry. The little ones must be constantly fed. And it's off again into the dense alluvial forest. The kingfisher likes to hunt where the water is clear and quiet, perched and watching above the surface. This is where he waits for the opportune moment to dive for the fish. But this kingfisher also has an advanced technique. Like a hummingbird, he flutters above the water and looks out for prey. If the hunting ground and nest are far apart, the kingfisher can cover large distances. Yet, despite its effort, the bird is running out of places to breed. Where can he burrow a nest by artificially channeled streams or atop a brimming dammed lake? These beautiful birds are diligent. Once they've found a good spot to nest, they will make use of it two or three times. Often, the first nest is still occupied by the first batch of offspring, so the parent must make a new home next door. First, the soil is picked out of the wall. Once the hole is large enough, the kingfisher uses its beak and feet to scrape away more earth. The tunnel building takes some time, with the small bird also collecting food for the little ones. Luckily, the backwater of the Danube offers a plentiful supply of fish, and some are only two meters deep. The water is filled with nutrients and gets very warm in the summer. For fish like the rudd, tench, or tiny sunbleak, there's plenty of food to go around. The steady water is also a paradise for dragonflies. Over 20 different species buzz around the area. One of the rarest breeds in southern Germany is the two-spotted dragonfly. The larvae take two to three years to develop. Then comes the pivotal moment. Somewhere well hidden along the riverbank, a wonder of nature unfolds. The spectacular metamorphosis into a flying insect. Along a molting seam on the creature's back, the skin tears open and the dragonfly forces itself out of its diving suit. 
a long and arduous procedure for only a few days of flying. The two-spotted dragonfly has a very short lifespan of about 30 days, from mid-May to the end of June. It's hard to imagine that very soon these wings will be capable of the most acrobatic of maneuvers. The hatching takes almost two hours, and it takes that long again for the body and wings to harden sufficiently for the creature to be able to fly. The water level of the river and groundwater are interconnected. When the snow melts in the spring, the Danube brims at its fullest. As a consequence, groundwater is pressed upwards in the floodplains around the river. It recedes when the water level goes down again. When one intervenes with this dynamic synergy, the floodplain is lost. Many animals and plants rely on the alternating water level, the flooding and the dry spells. The wet meadows are a refuge for rare bird species. In spring and autumn, countless migratory birds scavenge here for food, like the wood sandpiper. It wades through the water looking for insects, worms and snails. The wide open moist meadows don't just offer food. The large curlew bird breeds here in a few sheltered areas. It's almost the size of a chicken and can spot a troublemaker from far off, even in the tall grass. An encounter between long ear and long beak, a quaint jewel. But the tense moment is over quickly and each struts or hops off. That the bird is so ready to fight has two reasons, two little reasons. A curly with offspring is a rare sighting. As with most birds that need meadows as breeding ground, their habitat is fast running out. Flooding is a vital survival factor for the alluvial forest. The regular high water levels destroy much in their wake, but also provide vital nutrients and prevent the floodplain from silting up. 150 years ago, the floodplains along the German part of the Danube would stretch for kilometers. But many alluvial forests were cleared and made into farmland. The kestrel doesn't really mind whether the Danube is high or low. Hunting only becomes difficult with very high water levels. But there's no risk to his nest. It's well protected and almost 20 meters high in the heart of the forest. These three young birds are almost fully fledged. Their nest was originally a buzzard or crow's nest and is now serving as nursery for the young kestrels. The young are already so big that they need to be fed by both their parents. They're growing quickly and will soon have reached the weight of an adult. This means the end of the hard work for the parents is in sight. Flooding has become a far more serious issue than it was before, as barely any natural buffers remain.
floodplains can slow down flood waves very effectively, but the entire expanse along the Danube has lost 70% of its natural floodplains. The sad remainder can no longer protect settlements near the river. The young beavers are growing fast. Already in their second week, the young begin to gnaw at leaves and herbs, and after three weeks, the milk from the mother is just a supplement. But there's always time to play, even on mother's broad tail. The little ones learn early on that only a well-cared-for coat protects against the cold and the wet. But it takes a while before each of the 23,000 hairs per square centimetre is combed and greased. Summer. Here and there, beautiful gems adorn the alluvial forest. The inaccessible and swampy flood meadows are a refuge for many shy bird species. The area becomes a gathering place for water and wading birds during migration time. Here, they can rest and feed in peace. It's a place for them to recharge for the long flight ahead, to breeding areas in the north or warmer climes in the south. Some days see over 10,000 birds in the wetlands of the free-flowing Danube. Once the breeding season is over, the curlews gather in flocks and move about as one. Now, at the height of summer, the backwater is very shallow and offers plenty of food for every beak, long or short. One of the rarest guests here is the little egret. Its snow-white coat makes the delicate bird one of the most noticeable along the Danube. But from a fisher's perspective, the animal apparently looks like a cloud even if not every fish seems to see it that way. But the little egret has another tactic. He scuttles along the bottom with his feet, trying to flush out the fish with jerky movements. It sometimes helps to charge around the water with strong movements. But perhaps the grey heron has already had his fill and there's no fish left. Our small friend is better off trying his luck elsewhere. Out in the river, there is enough prey for the herons, but the waters run too deep. There are over 50 types of fish teeming in this 70 long kilometer stretch of the Danube. It's one of the most diversely populated river tracts in Central Europe. In the free flowing Danube, there are fish that need the current. They spawn in the shingle and swim kilometers along the stream. Here, fish thrive that cannot survive anywhere else. Yet this underwater idyll does not remain undisturbed. Intruders are making life for the endemic fish more difficult such as this Siberian sturgeon. A century ago, six species of sturgeon could be found here. Today, only the sturlet can be found in this part of the Danube. All others have died out. And now the introduced Siberian sturgeon makes its way along these waters with unforeseeable consequences for the indigenous fish population. The round goby has also made its home here. It comes from the river's estuaries and was brought here with the ballast water of the container ships. In some parts of the Danube, 
they make up a third of a fisherman's catch. Most of the flood meadows that lie between the high water dams and the river are extensively farmed and mown only twice a year. Shepherds also take their flocks to graze here regularly. The sheep make for a very effective lawn mower along the banks that stretch on for kilometers. This pasture is well kept to ensure that the meadows, so important for so much plant and animal life, do not overgrow into bush and forest. Out of the lodge. Thanks to its large build, sharp claws and sharp teeth, the beaver has few natural enemies. The little ones need to be a bit more careful, but mum's there to watch out. One day, the playing beavers will have to fight to defend their territory. These battles can be so aggressive that some die from their injuries. But soon, the fresh green leaves look more tempting. These weren't on the menu inside the lodge. Under cover of darkness, even very rare creatures dare to venture from their hideouts. Fish which are only found in the Danube and its basin, the zingle and the ruff, are rare species of perch they live at the bottom of the river, over the shingle and gravel plains with the water currents. The small perch are considered spawn thieves by fishing enthusiasts, but are under protection all year round. The main cause for their decline is that long stretches of free-flowing river current are disappearing. On the edge of the meadow, a great green bush cricket waits for the new warming day. It's still frozen stiff from the cool night. The river warbler, on the other hand, is already up and chirpy. Its distinctive song can be heard far and wide over the floodplain. Its whole body vibrates as the little bird performs its unbroken song, quite the feat of endurance. The rhythmical, ongoing quality of its song makes it sound like an old sewing machine, and it's often referred to as the sewing machine bird. By now, the great green bush cricket has warmed up enough to start its morning ritual, although today it's a vegetarian breakfast, a rare occurrence. Usually the cricket hunts down caterpillars, flies, moths and other animals. This cricket used to be more common. Modern agriculture has forced it out of its natural habitat, but it's still indigenous to the meadows of the Danube. In the late summer or early autumn, the river is at its lowest water level and many parts of the floodplain dry up. Large beds of silt and shingle appear and with them a new habitat. Only a flowing river can transport the washed up debris away. The low water level is as much part of the floodplain as the regular high water. It is the two in combination that enable the alluvial forests and meadows to thrive. Many specialized plant and animal species are dependent on the dynamic water level. One of these is the little ringed plover. It's the only plover that breeds, or at least used to, along a German river. 
As very few natural riverbanks remain, it must now resort to nesting in gravel pits and quarries. Without these replacements, the bird would be extinct here. Wading birds like the wood sandpiper are also at home in the fluctuating water levels. This has a useful tool to hunt for food, its special beak. It's soft and has a tactile organ at its tip. This allows the bird to hunt for food deep in the mud or the soft earth. The little ringed plover is the most common visitor of this sparse area. He knows that there is plenty of food on the dry riverbank, it just needs to be found. He doesn't have as long and useful a beak as the wood sandpiper, so he needs to adopt a different approach, similar to that of the little egret. The plover scurries about, hoping to disturb its prey with its tapping feet. The Bavarian Riviera? No, just the beach of a free-flowing river. The Danube has reduced to being a narrow channel. No silt covers the sea of stones. The current has washed them clean. The hustle and bustle on the floodplain has passed. Now, at the end of summer, a bird can find itself with backwater all to itself. And it's open season for all. The fish are easier to catch in the shallow waters. The great